You might remember this pin from a recent video. This is a sculpted arbor pin kit, and I used a cedar blank. Both were sent to me by Steve Froome. Now, right after I made this kit, I took it in the house, I showed it to my wife, and she fell in love with the kit. She just loves all the filigree at the center band and the nib and the cap, and just thought it was a beautiful, beautiful kit. However, she does not care for cedar. So she came out to the shop, dug around, and she found this blank. This is a pink diamond cast blank from Tim McKenzie. And we're going to today remake this pin with this diamond cast blank. The first thing we're gonna need is a spare set of tubes for this Arbor pin kit. Now, I don't have a spare set around the shop and I really don't wanna go online and order just a set of tubes from some company because they're probably gonna charge me $8.95 for shipping. I do know that this uses a standard eight millimeter diameter tube. I just so happen to have a 10 inch length of eight millimeter tube in my shop. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start by disassembling this pin and then we're gonna take the upper and lower barrels and we're going to put them against this tube and we're going to measure out and cut the proper length tubes to remake our kit. I went through my punches and found the proper diameter punch for an eight millimeter pin. Pulling the pin apart, you'll remember I never glued the trim ring onto the tendon for the cap, and I'm happy I didn't do that because now it's much easier to disassemble this pin. We're not gonna have to soak that in acetone to dissolve the glue. I'm gonna take my pin disassembly pliers and I'm gonna grab my cap. We'll slide the punch right into the tube and I'm gonna pop it a couple times with a hammer. And just that easy, we've removed the cap from our pin. The body of the pin requires a little more care. We're gonna start by removing the transmission. We'll also remove the ink refill. And the standard eight millimeter punch will not fit inside of our pin because we've got this little grommet on the back that allows us to thread the transmission in. So I went back through my punches and I found a punch that will fit just inside of the threaded se section and it reaches all the way down to the nib. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this in my soft grip pliers. And once again, I'm gonna cup the component with my hand and I'm gonna tap the, the back of the punch until the component is released from the pin. That was a little more aggressive than I wanted, uh, but it was really in the pin. It really was pressed in well. Now we're gonna remove the smaller punch. Oh, this was in my hand, but this is just the trim ring that goes onto the nib. Not a problem there. We're gonna flip our punch over. We're gonna insert our eight millimeter punch and we're very carefully going to tap the grommet out of our blank. We want to be extra careful with this because if you'll remember when we assembled this we, we made a special piece to put over the end of this so that we didn't damage it because it's very thin. The inside piece is thin as well so we're going to be really careful and we're going to use light taps with the hammer to remove this grommet. You can see it's starting to come out. A few more taps and we'll have it. There it is. It just released into my hand. And if I look at it, nice. It does not look like we damaged it. Let me go ahead and run the refill through. Oh, beautiful. We got this out without damaging it. I was nervous about that, but it worked out well. I'm ready to measure and cut my new tubes. And what I want to do is I'm going to cut them longer than I need because this plumber's pipe cutter will actually bevel the ends of the tube. And I want to be able to go to my disc sander using my sanding jig and I'll square the end of that tube up so that I can press a component into it. Um, because it's beveled, I want extra so that I can sand that away and take the tube down to the exact length it needs to be. So I'm going to line this up. Apologize if my hand gets in the way. I'm trying to keep as much visible as possible. And I'm gonna make this longer than it needs to be. Now to use one of these is really simple. You just twist a little nut down here and open it up. And then I'm going to tighten it. And I'll show you where I tightened it to. Notice the line on my blank right there. You can see the little black disc wheel hitting that line. We're just gonna snug it up with our fingers. We're gonna rotate it once or twice. We'll snug it again. 
rotate it, and we're going to continue to do this until the piece that we need is separated from the entire blank. I can feel it starting to give, and there it is. Okay. Now let me loosen it back up and get this apart. Here's what I mean by it bevels the tube. So by making this longer than, need, than I need it to be, I can take it to the disc sander and I can square that up. It'll get rid of the bevel and leave me with a perfect tube on both ends. The nice thing about this kit is that both of the tubes are the exact same length. So using my calipers, I took a measurement of the upper tube. I verified by putting the lower tube between the calipers and we know exactly how long our tubes need to be. I have both tubes trimmed to the same length and they both very nicely fit between the prongs of the calipers. Being that this is an acrylic blank, I don't want to cut the blank before I drill. What I'm going to do is measure into the blank the proper depth, leaving a little bit of slop on each end of the tube. We've got our blank marked for the two tubes. What we want to do now is before we take this to the bandsaw and cut it, we're going to chuck up our eight millimeter bit and we're going to drill into the blank just past the first mark. We'll go to the bandsaw, we'll cut the first blank off, then we'll go back to the drill press using the hole because we drilled just past this mark, that'll give us a great starting point. We'll finish drilling the blank past this point, back to the bandsaw, cut that off, and we'll have perfect entry and exit holes on both ends of our acrylic blank, and we will not have to worry about blowout. Let's start by marking the end of our blank so we know exactly where we want to drill. With round blanks, you've really only got to make two marks. Put a dimple right in the center of our blank, and we're ready to head to the drill press. I've chucked up my 8mm drill bit, and you can see I made a blue mark right there with a Sharpie, so I know when to stop drilling. I'm ready to drill my blank for the second tube, and you'll notice I was starting to get kind of close to the wall. I don't want to follow that pattern and blow out at the end of the blank, so what I'm going to do is flip it over, and I'm going to drill from the other end. Now, if you were using a piece of wood, this might be important because now your grain would not match up. In this particular case, we're not. This is going to match up regardless of where the upper and lower half are cut from. So if we drill from this end, we can remove this off center piece, and we'll have a nice blank. I've got one of my tubes here, and we're just gonna lay it on this end of the blank. Always leave a little bit of extra on both ends. And this marker is way too fat, but uh, it'll be fine. So we're gonna leave a little bit on this end, and we should be just fine for this blank. perfect entry and exit hole for our tube. We'll start by roughing our tubes up. We're going to go ahead and plug the ends of our tubes. I like to plug both ends. This just keeps the glue from getting inside of the tube and causing any issues later on. I've got equal parts of resin and activator. We're just gonna go ahead and mix those together. Spread it on the tubes.
Now we're gonna check the ends of our blanks to make sure the tubes did not sink too far into the blank. They look good. We'll set them aside to dry and we'll be back to turn them in a later time. Let's go ahead and knock the Play-Doh plugs out of our blanks. I normally like to turn between centers, but this particular pin has an upper and a lower section. And to just speed things up and make it a little easier, I'm gonna turn on my mandrel saver. Before you use a mandrel, the first thing you wanna do is check the mandrel and make sure it's not bent. And you can see there's a little bit of run out at the end of my mandrel. You can kind of see it. And what I like to do is just line it up and give it a little bit of a, of a, of a tug there. See how that straightened it out? That mandrel is fairly straight now. I'm gonna go ahead and run my saver up on it. And you'll notice a little bit of rust here. As I, as I make blanks, sometimes I sand them with micro mesh and water and it gets uh, beneath the uh, bushings and the blanks. And the uh, mandrel can get a little bit of a rust on it. Uh, or it could have a little CA glue that got through. So what I like to do is we're gonna take some sandpaper and clean this mandrel. Let me get these extra bushings off of here. There we go. This is a piece of 120 grit, just takes a small piece. I'm gonna guess my lathe is running at somewhere around 1200 RPMs, and I'm just gonna lightly sand the surface of my mandrel. I'm just gonna take a paper towel and wipe the dust off of the mandrel. Lastly, I want to apply a little bit of wax. Now, normally I would use crystal clear paste wax, but I just don't have any available. So I'm just gonna take some of my Renaissance wax. I'm just gonna wax the mandrel. This will help keep it from uh, rusting. I'm gonna be turning Alumalite blanks, which means I will be using micro mesh and water. And this will just help keep it from rusting you know, in the near future. We'll have to do this again at some point. I'm gonna let it set up for a few minutes. Then we're gonna come back with another piece of paper towel and we're gonna buff the mandrel. The wax has had plenty of time to set up. Now we're just gonna buff it off. And that should protect our mandrel. One last thing we're gonna do while the mandrel's running. Lay a tool in your hand, just across your fingers like this, and lay the other end on the mandrel, and feel for vibration. If you feel vibration, your mandrel's bent. If you don't feel any vibration, that mandrel is nice and straight and you're ready to turn. Those simple little tips I just gave you will help you to maintain your mandrel as well as to turn a much higher quality pin. If you've ever turned a pin and the blank seems to be a little bit ovaled, or if you've ever turned a pin and on one side the blank is below the bushing, but on the other side the blank extends past the bushing, it's probably because your mandrel is bent. If you have a bent mandrel, the most common cause for that is over tightening the neural nut or putting too much pressure with your live center on the end of your mandrel. That's why I like to use the mandrel saver. The mandrel passes through the tailstock and the pressure is put on the bushings, therefore there's no flex on the mandrel. It's still possible to bend that mandrel. When you're sanding, if you sand too aggressively, you can bend it. Or if you put too large of a piece of wood on there and it's out of out of um, round and it's it's kind of rocking the lathe a little bit, that can cause you to bend your mandrel. Also, hard catches. If you're cranked down really tight and your blank is spinning really fast and you get in there with the tool and you go to hog it out and you put a lot of pressure on there and the mandrel is stopping, things like that can cause your mandrel to get untrue. So always check it for trueness. Always do a little bit of maintenance to make sure your mandrel is, is going to perform its best and you're gonna get the best quality pins that you possibly can. You're going to take a look at my blank when it's spinning and you're going to think my mandrel is bent. Let me show you what I mean. Now we know that we just tested our mandrel and it's true. Anytime you wanna test, simply lay a tool on the bushings. The tool is not jumping. You know the mandrel is true. What that means is I did not drill straight through my blanks. They were drilled at a bit of an angle. That's not going to be an issue. We've got plenty of material between the blank and the bushings. So as we true these blanks, this 
odd appearance of the blanks being way out of out of round or the mandrel being bent is going to go away i just finished micro meshing my blanks they look pretty good uh, i can see a little bit of tube through the lower blank and maybe a little bit of tube up here we'll talk about this more in a minute that's because you'll remember i forgot to paint the inside of my blanks i got in a hurry and it happens to me every time and i did not put the white paint on the tubes uh, otherwise these would really really have more of a pop to them uh, on the upper blank, you'll notice right here, you probably saw it as I was sanding, there's a little bit of a concave area here. I got a little aggressive with the tool. I sort of dug in, and uh, that's just not going to look right. It's not going to line up properly with the bushings. What we're going to do is this blank is the same at the top and bottom. It's the same diameter. So we're just going to flip this around like this. And what we'll do is we'll cut our tenon here, which will eliminate that concave section. If we had a more of a grained blank, this would be difficult to do. But with this blank, it's non-directional. It's not going to cause a problem. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to cut my tenon. And then we'll get some wax on here and we'll buff this blank. Using my calipers and a 9 32 inch drill bit, I found the diameter of the bit. And then I transferred that to my blank. Now we're ready to remove material. I'm going to go ahead and transfer these blanks to my buffing mandrel. And while we're making the transfer, we'll go ahead and remove this little ring of material. We'll get it back on the lathe, get a little wax on here, and then we'll take it to the buffing wheels. As I spin this blank up, you're gonna notice quite a bit of wobble in this mandrel. This mandrel gets a lot of pressure put on it as I press it into the buffing wheels. Uh, therefore, it is, it is bent and there's no need to even try to straighten it out. It doesn't hurt anything because all we use it for is the buffing process. I would really like to thank you for joining me for the remaking of this sculpted arbor pin. The pin actually turned out nice after I got it all assembled. The only issue I have with it, and because I have this issue, uh, I think I may remake it a second time. Uh, I did not paint my tubes. I got in a hurry, neglected to paint the tubes, and I can see just a little bit of the brass shining through. Other than that, I love the pin. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.